been, we've been talking about how to alter, evolve, transform governance take place in a context of increasing, gnawing desperation. <laughs> the global climate crisis is the quintessential problem of governance in the Anthropocene. And there are two particular ways in which the climate crisis, as we, are, as we commonly think of it, ha uh, offer us a real problem, a real challenge. One is that it is a lag problem. No matter what we do, it's going to take decades for our positive actions to manifest. We could stop putting out any carbon into the atmosphere right this very second, and we'd still see another 20 to 30 to potentially 50 years of warming. Secondly, it is a, a problem where no one actor can do enough. The United States could stop putting any carbon into the atmosphere, and that would not be enough to stop, to stop the climate, uh, climate crisis. China could stop putting any carbon into the atmosphere. It's not enough. It's something where all of us have to work together, something we're notoriously not very good at. However, there is one, one possible way of responding to this global climate problem that suffers neither of these failings, and itself is actually probably even more problematic. And that is this idea of geoengineering, which I mentioned a moment ago. Uh, this is the idea of um, taking global scale action to manipulate the global climate. And you do that, and there are a number of different proposals about how to do that, and they all have the pro a number of problems in common. Um, there is a question, above and beyond, a question of control. Who decides what to do? There's a problem of liability. If a problem erupts, if there's a crisis or a um, a storm or disaster subsequent to the use of geoengineering, who gets blamed? Uh, geoengineering, the, the most common uh, argument for what it can do is to put uh, sulfate particles into the stratosphere, you know, pumping crap into the atmosphere in order to block out a, a small amount of incoming sunlight, just like a volcano does. And that we know that works. It can work very quickly. And it does nothing about carbon, does nothing about ocean acidification, but it cuts off the potential for truly catastrophic results around temperature. It's a tourniquet. And just like a tourniquet, you don't use that unless you absolutely have to, unless you're desperate and have, you know, a, you have, you're a desperate people willing to take desperate action. The problem is that any one actor can do this. Belgium could do this. Singapore could do this. Bill Gates could do this. This is not something that requires global cooperation. It requires somebody with an agenda and a little bit of money. Uh, you, could put, you could put the uh, uh, stratospheric, stratospheric sulfate injection, you get that going for less than the cost of a space shuttle launch. Okay, so there are, there are models that, that demonstrate that one, this would probably work. This would probably hold temperatures down temporarily as long as we're cutting carbon at the same time, because if we don't <coughs> cut carbon, then we have to actually keep putting more and more and more stuff into the stratosphere. But there's also issues, this changes global climate dynamics. It's very likely that if we put uh, sulfates into the stratosphere to hold down temperatures, we would alter monsoonal rainfall patterns in South Asia. It would be raining at times when it normally wouldn't, drought at times when it normally would be rain. This is not a good thing. Um, it would alter um, issues around agriculture, it would change what we can do for uh, our disease response. All of these things get changed by this choice to take desperate action. And yet, if we don't deal with carbon fast enough, those desperate choices will all be all that's left. So, how do we govern this? How do we control this? How do we decide what to do? Do we leave that up to the U.S.? Do we leave that up to China? Do we leave that to the U.N.? I had the opportunity to participate in a global war game run by a three-letter agency a couple years ago. And in fact, if you are in a situation where you have one actor, you know, US, China, deciding what to do, inevitably it led to the mobilization of nuclear weapons. This is an existential threat to some parts of the world. If you decide to cut off the rainfall, if you decide to change the temperatures, you are changing the environment for someone who doesn't like that. And yet, if we don't act, desperate people can do desperate things. Thank you.